Hello everyone, uh, John here with Walks 101, one of Melbourne's biggest walking tour companies, and this is episode three of Out of Isolation, where I go outside so you don't have to. Today I am at a place that's a little bit off the beaten track, but it's a place that's pretty interesting to me. You guys who are uh, local to Melbourne might start to recognize the massive span above me. It's the uh, Westgate Bridge. So as we look around right over here, massive bridge. I'm going to get a better view of it in just a second. But the thing that blew me away when I first found out about this place was that it is the site of one of the biggest industrial disasters. I, think, I believe it's the biggest industrial disaster in Melbourne's history, or in Australia's history rather. 35 people were killed on this site uh, back in October of 1970. Uh, and it's uh, a place where there's a memorial and it's still here today. Unfortunately, with all the Metro Tunnel works going on right now, big tunnel happening here in Melbourne, um, it's a little bit derelict right now. Uh, but as I look behind me, oops, we do have the names of all the people who were killed on this bridge when it was being constructed. Now, for you guys who don't live here, you won't actually know it very well. So I'm going to go to a place where I can get a better look um, and show you the bridge and give you a better idea uh, of what happened here. But it's a massive bridge that connected uh, the western suburbs. The western suburbs of Melbourne have been growing at an incredible pace. Um, Melbourne, in general, has not seen growth uh, like it is right now since the gold rush. During the gold rush, the population of Melbourne, the gold rush, by the way, is 1851 uh, to 1892. And during the gold rush, the population of Melbourne exploded from 75,000 to 500,000 people in just 10 years. Now, we have seen a population explosion of 1 million people in the last 10 years. And so it's pretty incredible the transformation that's taken place here in, uh, in Melbourne. And when you have massive population changes like that, you need infrastructure, like that bridge behind me. If you guys look over this way, you can see a city, so you have an idea of where I am. Um, so that's, uh, I'm, not, I'm not, not that far out. I believe it's about eight kilometers uh, if you're taking the roadways. So crow flies, probably a little bit shorter. But where I'm going right now is it's not the most uh, attractive name in the world. The Stony Creek Backwash. And a better view of that Westgate Bridge now as it comes into view. So I'm going to walk down this because it's got quite an impressive view of the bridge. Uh, a bridge is built as people start to expand to the west. Melbourne, at first, is just the city center. If you go into the city center of Melbourne, uh, we have what's called the Hoddle Grid over there, and that was the initial bit of Melbourne. The place where I am right now, across the Yarra River in the western suburbs, uh, was not a desirable place to live. Some of the biggest population growth centers today, like Werribee, Footscray, uh, Altona, um, these neighborhoods uh, used to be, well, still are, marshland. You can even see it right now. You can see I'm walking on a boardwalk. Uh, I've got water right next to me. Um, the city of Melbourne and, and uh, suburbs started out going out to the east. And when you look at a map of Melbourne, you look at the infrastructure in this area, you'll understand what, where the population grew. The trams in Melbourne all go out, for the most, for the most part, to the east. There's only one lowly tram going out to Flemington Road. Um, Melbourne has the oldest continuously operating tram network in the world, but all those trams service a lot of the wealthier areas of Melbourne and the East. Meanwhile, the poor West has been the forgotten stepchild of the Melbourne suburbs. Um, that's why the Westgate Bridge went up. And here's a better view for you. Now, when you look at that bridge span, it was just in this section of the bridge behind me that the disaster happened in October of 1970. In October of 1970, the bridge was under construction. Uh, it wasn't, the two parts weren't connected yet. And between a few of these trusses here, there was a massive collapse. Uh, the collapse that killed these 35 people uh, also injured a number more. There are stories, really incredible, harrowing stories when you look at the news media. And if you want, I encourage you, hop onto YouTube, you can see some vintage uh, news clips 
uh, of this um, because there are stories of construction workers who literally like rode the bridge down as it fell and they were able to survive uh, having not been struck by debris along the way. It's a harrowing story of a city trying to expand, and it's a city, it's a story that continues to this day because the Westgate Bridge, having complete, been completed a few years after the disaster in 1970, is now fully at capacity. Anyone who lives in the West understands this, uh, the daily frustration of the incredible congestion on the Westgate Bridge. And if you miss the incredible congestion on the Westgate Bridge during the daytime, well, then you've got uh, lane closures just about every night as they struggle to keep it up. That's why we have a massive tunnel being built underneath the Yarra River. We don't like to admit very often when we steal ideas from Sydney. Uh, we like to, Sydney takes all of our ideas like laneways and trams. But the fact of the matter is we saw what they did with the Sydney Harbor Tunnel to complement the Sydney Harbor Bridge and said, let's do that also. And so there's a massive Westgate Tunnel being built right now. I believe it is slated to be finished in 2022. Um, but as these things go with construction delays, I think a lot of us are fully expecting this thing to be uh, maybe a year or two delayed from there. Anyone who's been following the news has been seeing there's been some pretty intense discussions, tense negotiations uh, uh, between the construction uh, companies and the government as they debate whose responsibility it is to deal with contaminated uh, earth that they've encountered along the way. Pretty dramatic, interesting negotiations going on. As I'm making my way over, I'm actually seeing they're doing some works right now on the bridge. See that big crane there? Something's going on over there. Um, I'm quite sure what it is. Huh. It's like a little extension coming out there. Anyway, just coming up to the uh, riverside, I honestly don't know who comes here. Um, it's kind of this derelict area with some pretty interesting things. Let's check it out. Like an old chain. It's right there on the ground. Uh, Would have uh, been for tying to a ship. And then the um, city, what city? Port Melbourne has put in a little informational plaque here. If anyone wants to come out and see it. If anyone knows me, they know I love myself an informational plaque. So you can read all about the Stony Creek backwash. Originally rich with flora and fauna, but during the 19th century, it became a repository for waste and nearby factories and industries. The area is once again becoming an important natural asset. And I'll let you come out here if you want to read the entire thing. But actually, here's something cool. Um, there you go. They have a little map they've made here of uh, a whole series of plaques that you can check out. I've seen a few of these for myself, actually. Just over there, number 11, is over where the ferry docks. If anyone's not aware, we have a bridge, uh, the bridge here, Westgate Bridge, that'll take you over the Yarra, but we also have a punt. A punt is a, a kind of boat that you can go on, a ferry type. And uh, you can just see, let me point it out for you, right there that that is a little odd uh, dock where the yara punt arrives the yara punt goes oh there it is right now hey production value right over there see that red boat coming across that is the Yarra River, River Punt. Now, if anyone is looking to get out of the house uh, and explore, it is big enough to keep your mandatory social distancing. Uh, so you hop on that punt, you go across, I believe it's around four dollars. It's been a while, uh, I haven't taken it in a couple months now. But it's an amazing way to see the city. It brings you over there to Port Melbourne, uh, or to Fisherman's Bend, and then you can go on a nice little bike pass from there. Um, if you ever want to do a, a, ride, a bike ride around the city, it's really nice to do. If you're walking, a little bit of a walk. It's good if you want to see the Westgate Park. There's a beautiful park over there with a, a lake that gets uh, colored pink uh, during the, I believe it's the autumn because of the algae in it. So that can be a fun thing for you guys to do. The western suburbs, though, in general, like I said, have always kind of been the, the forgotten part of Melbourne. Uh, now they're pretty up and coming. I myself call myself a resident of these places, which is why I'm, I'm out here right now. Uh, there's a place called Yarraville, which is uh, an, an amazing spot with an old Art Deco cinema. Uh, Newport is, uh, has got a, a great set of high streets and shops. Williamstown is where I broadcast from the other day from Time Bell Tower. It's a part of the city that I, I like quite a bit. these 
other things I was going to tell you about today, about the West, and it's all leaving my head right now as I'm going live. What was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, that's right. Uh, Batman's Marsh. So John Batman is the one who discovers... No. Anytime I use the word discovery, take it with a huge grain of salt. But John Batman is the European who came over to Melbourne in the early days. And that is why this whole area, this whole bend of the Yarra River, like all the land over there, that's all originally Batman's Marsh. Now it's been drained and it's been made for buildings. Actually, the, the Boeing fact, uh, headquarters, uh, Australian headquarters, is just over there. I can see the building from right now. Um, I'm going to turn this way so you can see that punt's coming in for a landing. There, there we go. There's the punts coming into the dock. Um, so anyway, that area was a marshland. It was an uh, area that was filled in after the fact and now has parks and industrial buildings and all the rest. Meanwhile, out here to the west, we do have a lot of um, great developments happening over here. Um, and one of the things that's going to change all that is, again, the Westgate Tunnel, which is going to make it a lot easier to come. Another fun thing to do if you're ever here, uh, ever want to explore this area, is you can actually take a boat, there's ferries that go from the city center of Melbourne down the Yarra River, and they'll connect you over to Williamstown. There's even one that goes all the way out to the Bellarine Peninsula, um, and it's a really kind of interesting way to get into the city. For any boats that do come into the Yarra River like this, though, there's actually one of my favorite buildings here is that one right there. That is, you know how airports have air traffic control? That's boat traffic control. One of the things that I get to do every now and again with my job is I get to work with cruise ships when they come in. Uh, and so one of the regular gigs that I get is myself and my team of tour guides, we all go over to a cruise ship, we hop on one of the ships, uh, only to go down like, almost below deck where there's a little port that they open up by the water, we hop on a rubber dinghy, and then we go down the Yarra River right behind me. And whenever we do that, the people on this little rubber dinghy, you know, I can't stress to you enough how small and just... Um, insignificant this boat is, but it has to follow the same regulations that the massive shipping container ships follow when they come in here. And so that means when we come in, they have to ring in to boat traffic control, they have to tell them what their boat looks like, what their intention is, and that's to help make sure that the big shipping container ships don't miss them when they're coming in. Uh, it could be pretty bad. We see these massive ships coming in Every, few, every hour, really. Uh, Melbourne has one of the biggest shipping ports uh, in Australia. And as a result, they're actually talking about moving that a little bit farther, uh, farther out, uh, so that we clear up Port Phillip Bay a little bit. I think, like a lot of people from Melbourne, when I go to Sydney, I feel a little bit jealous of the Sydney Harbour and all the ferry traffic that happens over there. So anyway, this has uh, been Out of Isolation, episode three. I hope you guys are doing okay. I had a bit of a day yesterday. I had a, I had a day where, you know, I work with a lot of small businesses. Uh, we have our hidden bar tour, but we go to about, we have about 25 bars that we work really closely with in uh, the city center. It's getting bad out there. I feel, really feel for these business owners. I, I talked to, I think I counted, it was seven, seven different people, either business owners or front of house people, who are just trying to figure out what to do. Um, initially, uh, we had you know, China uh, bans from coming here with this coronavirus thing. And then we had uh, more countries, Iran, uh, South Korea, um, and now it's a global ban. So that's just already decimated our public gatherings, but it's okay, we all thought. And I, I say we now, I'm including myself and Walks 101 in it, because we have domestic tourism. We'll just get locals to come out. But then there's a restriction, no more gatherings in 500. So I don't know how many people last night were watching the footy. I was watching um, the, um, the doggies play is it Collingwood. I've forgotten. I obviously wasn't paying that much attention. But it's the strangest thing because the football usually happens at the largest stadium in the Southern Hemisphere by area, the Melbourne Cricket Grounds, uh, or also at Marvel Stadium, which is another massive stadium. And this one was at Marvel Stadium, but the stands were empty. It was the strangest, most eerie thing, because you know, you're so used to watching sporting events, and you hear all the noise and everything of the crowd, but here you could actually hear the individual players just like shout to each other. It was interesting, but eerie is probably the word for it. 
And the reason for that is because we can't have gatherings of more than 500 people. But then, a few days ago, the government came out and said, we can't have gatherings of more than 100 people. Okay, we all thought, in uh, hospitality space, that'll be fine. Uh, we can make do with 100. A lot of uh, small bars that I know said, you know what? We might have to cut down, uh, not have 150 people. A lot of bars have capacities of between 100 and 200. And a lot of them that I go to have capacities of less. But then, yesterday, the announcement came out that we couldn't gather in areas of less than four square meters per one person. So what that meant is I had to go to a bar, a bar that I absolutely love in the city that's uh, an old gin distillery uh, in a former brothel from a building from the 1880s and that bar now has an effective capacity of 6.5 people given their liquor licensing it's just devastating i don't know what's going to happen for a lot of these bars I, I feel like i do know what's going to happen to them and that's what makes me worried is business owners are having to lay people off constantly and in the meantime uh, I talked to some front of house people who had lost 75% of their work because a lot of casual staff they work you know 40 50 hours a week but spread between a few different jobs and so their exposure is huge and because they're casual workers they don't get any holiday pay and so just had a pretty pessimistic day yesterday with all this stuff I, I don't I imagine some of you guys are going through the same kind of feeling. I, I think I came home and I just felt angry, uh, but I didn't know who to be angry at. And I was thinking about it and it made me think of Mr. Rogers. Um, Americans will know who Mr. Rogers is, uh, but Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood is like a children's television show uh, from my childhood where it's this uh, just kindly old guy who comes in and talks directly to you as a child who's watching it. There's actually a really good movie that just came out with Tom Hanks um, about this, about his life called um, It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Um, but anyway, he has this thing in the movie, uh, which is based on the show, where he says, what do you do with all of the hurt that you feel? And I think like a lot of people, I'm feeling a lot of hurt. I'm feeling a lot of anger right now but I don't know what to do with it because I don't know who to be angry at because there's nobody to be angry at. Who can I be angry at about a virus? I mean, I can be frustrated at the government regulations, but I understand the need for them. But I think this is just gonna be the next six months, this cycle of this frustration, but then kind of interest and excitement over these, these different things like the football happening with no fans or me having, like, this has got me really excited doing these little live streams, um, has me pretty interested. So that's how I'm feeling today. Um, I hope you guys are doing okay. I'll check in with you again tomorrow. I'm back where I started again at the memorial. Um, where you can come down and visit. If you want to come down here, you just have to go down to the road that goes just underneath uh, the Westgate Bridge, just next to the Science Works for you guys who are local, if you'd like to see it yourself. And people do still regularly lay flowers here. It's been a, been a while now, but I can see a fresh set of flowers right over there. So I would like to conclude this episode today in memory of the people who died in October of, 18, of 1970. And I'd like to thank you all for tuning in. This has been Out of Isolation. I am John with Walks 101. And this is me trying to figure out what to do with my walking tour company in this strange new world. I'll be coming to you live every day for the foreseeable future at around about this time. And I hope to see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.